CataractCoach.com, transconjunctival MSICS. This surgeon avoids making a conjunctival pyridomy by just going right through the conj. Let's check it out. So here's the patient for MSICS surgery sitting superiorly here. And now look here with the blade, just going to make your incision through conj and through sclera. Look at that. So a frown incision being made here. So not pulling back the conj, not doing a special pyridomy. Now going in with the crescent blade to create the incision here. Now, that looks very interesting to me. I've always done an MSICS incision or any scleral tunnel in two layers. I pull the conj, have it back, do a pyridomy. Then I expose the sclera, and then I make the scleral incision. And like my thinking here is, if I do it in two layers, I've got an extra barrier here to prevent infection or other problems. So here you go, long tunnel length here. Nicely made. Now, there are surgeons like this who have a lot more MSIC experience than I do. Remember, because of my location, I mostly do FACO. My MSICS procedures are at most one, maybe two in a month. Whereas I'll do a hundred times that for cataracts, right? I mean, a lot more cataracts. So now making another pair of paracentesis there. That's another incision. Let's see the technique here. A little bit of tripan blue dye going in. And then now let's get a viscoelastic and then a rex is being done. So now the question is, at the end of the case, will the surgeon still do this all sutureless? And I guess you can. So here you go. Let's see the rexus. Now remember, rexus needs to be pretty big in these eyes. There we go. Good viscoelastic going inside. A little on the corner. It looks like HPMC, hydroxypropyl methylcellulose. So that's a very good low cost uh, viscoelastic. Maybe not as cornea protective, but still works. And now here we go, making the entrance with the keratome into the anterior chamber. That's quite a long tunnel length. So that's what the surgeon has to the advantage. Now look at the tunnel length. It's probably three plus millimeters. And now using the keratome here to enter the lens capsule to start at the rexus, that's interesting. And now going to make a nice juicy rexus here with the forceps. Here we go, grabbing that capsule, and yep, nice, generous capsule rexus. So MSICS is performed very commonly in other parts of the world. In the U.S., it's re still relatively rare. I think most USA residency programs are actually not teaching their residents how to do this, and a lot of surgeons in practice are not familiar with the technique, but I promise you can learn. There's a video on cataractcoach.com. You have to leave YouTube for a second, but search for it. It's called Best Pearls or My Four Pearls for Learning MSICS. It, I make it really easy. So here you go, get that nucleus up, 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 lift it up there. Fantastic, above the iris, above the capsule. Hey, while we're taking a break here, let me tell you about retinaround.com, our retina channel. You're gonna love it, it's fantastic, both for the retina surgeons and specialists and also for us other ophthalmologists who just have an interest and sometimes see retina patients. It'll be fantastic, check it out. It's gonna be featured starting on March 1. Now, going in here with the lens loop, get that nucleus out, remember, don't lift up against the cornea. Push it down a little bit. There we go. There's the lens delivered like a baby. Let's clean up. Probably going to do, I'm guessing, a Simcoe cannula. So I'm guessing the surgeon's not going to be using an automated faker machine here. Let's see what the cortex removal is going to be. That's that a Simcoe. There you go. Simcoe cannula. In fact, sometimes this can be very useful. We had a case recently where the Simcoe cannula was very, very good in doing a challenging thing with my friend, Dr. Bruno Trendage. And so here we go, cleaning up that cortex, very nice. And nicely done. Let's see a little bit more, maybe going from the main incision now. And then with the lens, uh, it's very easy to put in a single piece PMA lens if you'd like. If you want to keep this really low cost, in other parts of the world, PMA lenses are much le less expensive than foldable lenses. And so here, cleaning up the capsule bag very nicely, the PMA lens can just go right in. Remember, PMA is polymethyl methacrylate. Those are rigid lenses. You cannot fold them. You cannot cut them. They're very, very rigid. Now, there's the viscoelastic to fill the capsule bag. Let's see the lens choice. Is it going to be? In fact, in my center, I don't know if we have any PMMA lenses other than anterior chamber eye wells. And so here, yep, there's the PMA lens. You can see it looks almost like three-piece, but it's actually single-piece. And get that in the capsule bag, nice and easy. You can see it also has holes at the edge of the optic there for some positioning if you need to. And then you finish up the case. And the question is, do you put a suture in? I'm a little bit more conservative. I'd just put a suture in. You could put in one, right? Put in one suture. Put a vicryl even. You don't even have to remove it later. It'll fall out on its own. I just put a vicryl in there at least to close the sclera. So I'd like to put a vicryl through the scleral incision there at least one or two, maybe even a tenor nylon if you want. And then I'd be tempted to at least pull the conch down more, maybe cauterize it in place. If you don't want to do cautery, maybe you could uh, 
just inject antibiotic and steroid in it just to puff it up a little bit, just to cover up that area. So I tend to do a scleral tunnel, whether it's MSICS or other procedures, in two different layers. I like a conch prayer to me, and then I like making just a scleral tunnel. Now, we have so many viewers on Countercoach who have so much more MSICS experience. Tell me, do you ever do this transconjunctival approach? It looks pretty reasonable. Obviously, in our guest surgeon's hands, it works really well. It's a nice outcome. Page is going to do fine. I'm just a little chicken. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Let me know your take on this. Do you do transconch MSICS? And if you don't, why don't you think you want to try it? All right, check it out. Remember, our podcast is the number one podcast in all of ophthalmology for a reason. Because it teaches you the secrets of how to be a more successful surgeon. Check it out.